Fantastic family. Today is Monday, September 28th. Raven 98 here, along with... Terry. Good morning, TNT. Oh, man. Having a rough start. Okay, Ray. Oh, you seen something out? Ooh, yes, we did have one weekend update. On Sunday, Iraqi TV has been broadcasting the CBI governor announcing the launch of the paper reforms for the currency of Iraq coming to the banking sector soon. This broadcast has been on a continuous news loop throughout the day. That's it. Okay, so, man, something's going on with my throat right now. Um, our only question is, what is soon? It's something we have to figure out. So, um, I can tell you uh, all weekend was about the reform papers, about it getting done. It was about the budget going back and forth. Um, I personally was expecting something on Sunday, something, and maybe that was it about the reform papers. The banks were expecting something because they brought all their people in on Sunday. They called them Sunday, made them come to work. They thought something was going to happen. But it looks like something might happen before the end of the week. Now, for good reason, they're announcing the reforms, the currency reforms. They're playing it on TV back to back to back. So it's fresh in everybody's mind. They're also announcing and planning the demonstrations to start on the 1st of October in all the squares throughout the country. So today's the 28th. In the next four days, I think we should clearly see something happen. Something. It has to be obvious to one of two things. Make the RV happen, or clearly tell the people exactly when it's going to happen, because that's what they get ready to demonstrate about. So, other than that, they continue to arrest people. They said they made some changes to the laws, and they're going to arrest some prominent people. I'm hearing they just started that today. It's what the article said yesterday, and they've already started today and announcing people who were involved in the auctions in charge of the auctions at the CBI were arrested again this morning. So they're clearly making a headway with that. And we'll just have to wait and see what goes on. Other than that, all the news is good news. There's no bad news. Except the budget hasn't been formalized. Congress goes back on the 10th of October. But we've heard that before, seen it before. It's not going to stop them from doing what they're doing. A lot of you guys are going to question what's going on with the embassy. And Iraq doesn't mean anything to us, but it doesn't. If you've been in this while, you know the biggest embassy in history is being built in Kurdistan. And it's been built for years. It started only years ago. And we think the biggest embassy anywhere in the world because it's really a military base, but it's an embassy. It's going to hold 10,000 people, something like that, embassy, but it's going to be in Kurdistan for two reasons. <clears throat> Years ago, they were going to divide the country up, and we were going to be part of, uh, well, we we're going to be involved with Kurdistan more than Baghdad. They're no longer going to do that. Kurdistan has always been our partner. And we're not concerned with missiles, launches, terrorists, or anything else in the Kurdistan area. So it makes sense for the embassy to be there. So all the pomp and circumstances and concerns about, you know, Pompeo threatening to close the embassy in Baghdad was always a plan. We've been a plan for years. It's just coming out now. The U.S. used it to threaten them, and Iraq has used it itself telling their people, if this happens, we could find new sanctions. 
the U.S. can stop everybody from helping us. They can end our whole vision, which it practically, and they could get sanctions against them, which we do anyway. But that is, isn't something that wasn't planned four or five years ago. That's what you need to really understand. Were they still going to leave a satellite office in Baghdad? Yeah, and they probably still will. They've just been preparing to move the main office to Kurdistan, which was the whole plan all the way. So, with that, Ray, let's go. <clears throat> okay. Mountain Mole. Let's see, we just answered New Money 28, so we'll go to Mountain Mole. Are you still hearing of other baskets in the future, or will all currencies adjust in this first basket? No, we still have other baskets. Okay. Okay. Did you hear me? Oh. <laughs> yeah. Just laughing at the next question. Beethoven says, what would it take for you to migrate from fantabulous er to the nth degree? which is limited by N, the population of a data set in math. Wanted me to migrate to Fantabulouser to the Lemiscate, meaning infinity in math. Anything short of the RV. Thank you for your tenacity bringing us the best intel available. <laughs> well, N is limited to the nth degree because sooner or later it will be obtained and will be reached. You can never reach infinity, so that's why I'm not fantabulous or to the limniscate. Lim limniscate. 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 I guess that's how that's pronounced. So the nth degree is a number that will one day be reached. So it's not infinity. It's just I can't solve n yet until certain things happen. I hope that under, everyone understands that. I know the math people do. El Timo says, on October 18th, it said that the IMF will launch a new global currency SDR. It's my understanding that this electronic currency will be highly restricted for ordinary folks and saving it will endanger its value somehow. How might this affect our potential blessing? Within the exchange process, will we will we be able to negotiate most of our exchange into physical gold or silver? What are your thoughts on this? My thoughts are: Let's everybody do what we did when I sent you back to the banking, and that is look up what an SDR is: a special drawing rights against a group of baskets. It's not a currency within itself that I'm aware of, and I don't see any way that it's going to affect our exchange or exchange rates when it's after the fact. Okay? Well, what about exchange um, some people gold actually, or silver? Wait, yeah, I would say some people actually, um, there are exchange locations who said they would do that exchange for gold and silver. Really? Now, why you would? Yeah, yeah, there, there are some already. Why you would do it, I don't understand. Yeah, I know there's a lot of gold people out there and silver people and, and investing. But I look at, um, I invested in Dinar. Let's say I invested $1,000 in Dinar. Wait, there's a lot of noise, right? And in 10 years, I get back $4 million. If I invested that same $1,000 in gold 10 years ago, what would I get back? $200? $300? And that makes sense to you, huh? I don't understand. Even if you got back $4,000 or $5,000, how does that compare? I, I don't understand. People hold gold and silver, which goes up two, three dollars, five dollars at a time, and you think it's a great investment, and people try to convince you that. Now, I'm saying the dinar is going to be gone. 
Gnomes will be gone. But there are so many other opportunities that pay you so much larger, so much faster than a 10-year, 20-year gold investment or silver investment. I could go there, but I think I sent it to you. 99, 100 IPOs this year. We have just as many next year. You can quadruple your money on the first day. Why would I spend 10 years with a bar of gold that's not even in my hand? I bought it. It's sitting in New York somewhere, Ohio somewhere, sitting in some bank somewhere. I don't even have it. Anyway, as you can tell, I'm not a gold or silver guy, so let's go. All right, 7MM. STW says, concerning the weekend update, does paper reforms mean newer, new lower denominations being printed and released? Okay, you covered that pretty much. Sweet and Low 1 says, when we go to the gold standard, are prices on everything going to drop? Hope prices will become like they were in the 60s and 70s, or at least come into some level that people can afford to live and feed their families. No. Most people not even want to know we're back to the gold standard, guys. It's no big deal. Everybody tries to tell you that it's going to what? Ensure our money? It's no big deal. Other countries are going to like it more because it's backed by gold. Okay, the value is not going to quadruple on the dollar or anything else. Our prices aren't going down. They aren't going up. This is more secure for our economy. It just looks good. There's no benefit, I dare you, to ask one of those people what's the benefit of us going back to gold. There's no different than fiat. It's still the U.S. dollar. It's still going to be the strongest dollar. And it's not going to mean one thing for an American citizen. Not one. Okay, what's next? Jim and KC. The FBI and the banks confiscate counterfeit currency. They don't tell you it is counterfeit, and then they can just give it back to you. Friday, the committee guy said the Zen currency would be claimed as counterfeit if submitted. Number one, given the conflicting opinions between the Treasury and bankers versus the committee recommendation, how confident are you that you will know for sure if it is both exchangeable and that there won't be a clawback? And if we exchange and there is a clawback, won't we have lost both the USD amount in our account and the Zim that might be exchangeable in the future? First of all, I'm not sure at all because I'm not in charge of currency for the United States. I'm not the treasury and I'm not the bank. So how would you expect me to know exactly what was going to happen. Guys, I can tell you what the bank is saying. They're going to accept it. When the RV happens, I can tell you that the bank is going to accept it if that's what they say. I can't tell you what the FBI or anybody else is going to do. That's a little ludicrous to me right there. That you want me to ensure that it's going to go through and it's going to be all right. And you're right. If you have counterfeit currency, anytime, not just now, you lose the currency and whatever U.S. dollars you bought it with, exchange it with, or anything else. That's just how it is. I'm not really concerned about it. Uh, I'm going to go in there and see what the banks do. I think they're going to be smart enough to know whether they take it or not on the first day, even though they're planning on it right now, they will know. And then if something happens, then it happens. They'll take it back. Nothing we're going to be able to do about that. They control the bank accounts. They control the money. If we weren't supposed to have it, then we just won't have it. I tell you, get more done. It's legitimate currency. I've been telling you that for years. Since we found out, get more dog. Get your dinar. Base it on that. If we get the Zim, then it's just gravy. That's all. It's extra. No, I can't say extra. 
It's more money. All right, what's next? Everybody telling me how to fix my voice. I appreciate it, but I'm in the middle of a call right now. Beta says, a fellow denarian just passed away. Wife has no clue on what to do at the exchange center. Has his power of attorney over him. She is elderly and can her daughter go with her at the appointment? Oh, I thought you were going to answer that one. Oh, I guess I will have to save you throw some. Uh, <laughs> need to tell her to give when she makes her appointment give them the same story they'll they'll tell her what she can do that's the best answer I can give you just tell them they'll let you know um, what, what she can do and how to come in to handle her that exchange I think that was the last question on the board let me refresh to make sure yes it was alright so we'll go to live callers 281 area code first on the lot. Well, hello, Ray. Hello, Tony. Hi there. I am surprised I'm number one today. Oh. I'm from Canada. And so the Canadian would be about 35 cents more than the, the American dollar. Is that right? Um, what is the exchange rate for the dollar? Uh, 1.35. 35 cents more. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Very good. So, uh, you know, like I, I'm kind of calculating, calculating it. So a million dinar would be 470 U.S. So that would be 634,500 Canadian. Okay. And uh, the other thing, we can still buy, we've always been able to buy dinar and dong here in Canada. Uh, in fact, there's an online website that I buy some from. I have been buying some from. And it's called, uh, I don't know if I should say it, but Ultimate Exchange. And uh, I was looking at it today, and the Viet uh, the, the Dong, uh, if, if you sold it to them, they would pay $54.20. And to sell it to you, it's $89.40. But the, uh, the, the uh, dinar, they will buy it from you for $1,200 for a million. And then uh, if you want to buy a million, it's going to cost you $2,968 Canadian. So that's, uh, that's what I've been looking at. Now, my second question is from my wife, okay? And I said, you know what? I, they might not even answer it, but, you know, you were, you were saying today how, you know, people from the rest of the world look at uh, United States and things like that. So my wife, for, for weeks now, she's been wanting me to ask you, uh, like all of these other uh, people say, does Trump really have anything to do with the exchange? Um, the administration does, absolutely. Always okay. has, and we do have the final say-so. I cannot do like some other gurus and tell you every other day, every other week that Trump signed off and he signed off and he signed off. I mean, how many times can he sign off? Yeah. Or that Trump came up with some grand scheme to do this because I don't see any of his influence at all. I don't see anything that has changed as far as the RV, the rate, how it's paid out. I do see, because you got to give credit where credit is due, that they made the right selection for prime minister this time, which obviously Bush didn't and Obama didn't. So they did, in fact, do that part to get this thing moving. So they're absolutely, and I'm not going to give, I mean, say it was, I'm going to say it was this administration. So, yeah. I'm not to say he sat there at the table and he picked this guy out or he did that or he gave a direction because unfortunately I just don't believe in his mentality that much to think that he could even come up with this guy. <laughs> but in anything, everything that I see, sorry, I don't want anybody to make it nasty, you know, because 
I am a great American citizen. So just so you know, I am ex-military. I yep. love my country, but that doesn't mean the leadership is quite there. And, and I don't want to do that. I think we're still going to be able to take advantage of what was put together by others. I still believe we're working on the opportunity that George Bush gave us and the foundation that the Obama administration built for us to make this work right now where it's at. Because all the guidelines, all of the um, procedures, and all of the deadlines and things that Iraq is meeting today were all set by the Obama administration. This is what needs to happen. It just didn't happen. But now it is, in fact, happening. But the plan itself had already been set. The banking laws, the rules, and all those things were put in years ago, voted on change, and it took time. So this didn't just happen overnight. It wasn't just one person. It was a collaboration of the last three administrations. And, and so I have to give them that. But right now... Does our treasury, the people who advise him or that, always have the final say so until it happens? Absolutely. Well, you you know, everything you said may, makes a whole lot of sense, makes me feel a whole lot better. Because, you know, some of the things my wife has been saying makes a whole lot of sense. You know, we're just sitting here in Canada and we're we're looking down or we're watching the United States and everything that's going on. And we kind of have had the feeling that United States is the ones that, you know, are, are kind of leading this. And then Canada is going to follow and, and that kind of stuff. But then my wife always kept saying, how could this possibly happen with somebody like Trump in charge? Nobody's going to ever let this happen with him. And then with the, with the events that's happened just today that we see on the news, that really reinforced in her mind that it can't possibly happen as long as he's, you know, in charge or has anything to do with it. She thinks that it, they'd have to wait for him to be uh, to be kicked out. So what you're saying really uh, makes me feel a whole lot better that... Um, that, uh, you know, it's not just one person that's in charge. And the other thing that I've always had in the back of my mind, if this is a world event, how can the United States have that much power? I know that United States has has authority over the United Nations, which affects the whole world. But how could how could uh, just the United States with, uh, you know, just one person that, that uh, you know, kind of acts like Mr. Magoo driving a car, you know, operating the country <laughs> okay. that way. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on. Cause, yeah. Because we're getting offensive now. Now you're getting offensive, so. Okay, I'm sorry. I, I, I well, apologize. Uh, I, don't, I don't want to offend anybody. I don't want to yeah. offend anybody. Okay. Now, okay. Uh, no, listen. I just. No, yeah. listen. Let me, I'm going to answer your yep. question. Hold on. Yes, sure. We don't have to wait for any one person and that's why they need to see what's going on with the country itself right it's not all going to depend on president at the time it's going to depend on what's going on in iraq does it look like it's safe and secure are our investors ready to go into iraq as well as the other countries who all play a big part of it then let's go we have the final say-so because we had the first say-so. Our Department of Defense still rules over all of Iraq's sanctions and everything else. Still real mm -hmm. rules over all of their contracts. If you'll see the articles that their prime minister put out, their parliament put out, and it was telling their people, remember, I mean, stop bombing the embassy, Stop bombing the foreigners to come in. Stop carrying guns. Remember, they still have power over us. They said that to them themselves. They still have power over us, and this whole thing could be reversed. So be careful what you're doing. We do. That's not mm -hmm. really at one person's fingertip or one person's whim. This administration, like any administration, 
can do a lot of things the rest of the world doesn't like and could affect it, but one person can't do it. Even though he is the president of the United States, there's laws that says this goes through Congress, this goes through the Senate, this judicial. We have laws too. I know he thinks he's above the law, but trust me, and when it comes down to it and it starts hurting everybody's pocket, somebody certainly will set them straight if that's what it comes down to. But right now, they're just looking at not his decision, but what's going on. We say Iraq is destabilized, but the rest of the world, and as you know, is looking at the U.S. is headed in that same direction. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't even know. My wife just told me, man, I mean, I'm in Sacramento. She said this is the fourth day that they're marching downtown again. Four days in a row. And I said, really? Yeah. I drove downtown and everything's still boarded up. The stores are boarded up. The businesses are boarded up. And I said, Sid, this looks like a third world nation. Because that's what it looks like. And mm -hmm. that's not the U.S. that we had four years ago. Three years ago, I mean, it just wasn't like that. So everybody is noticing the change. And you can't get mad at them about it. If they're concerned about it, we should be concerned about it. All right? Yep, that's uh, that's very good. You know, a lot of the things that you're saying... Um, We've we've got uh, friends that that uh, moved to Escondido, which I think isn't very far from you, and uh, they were basically saying the th same things that it you know California is not what it used to be when they moved there, you know, 25 years ago, and uh, they're they're really really you know getting worried, and here we are in Canada feeling very safe, you know, and when we talk to them, you know, I. I I can see why they want to want to try to move back if they can. But anyhow, you know what? You've uh, you've answered all my questions and and you've really made me feel good. Uh, you you said exactly what I wanted to hear, and it gave me a lot more confidence that this is uh, this is about to go down. So I appreciate you listening to me. Thank you. All right. Thank you, sir. Okay. Um, chat folks just because a person is saying something you don't want to hear you're risking your ability to stay in chat with your comments now some of you have already been banned for five hours but we can make it permanent next caller 404 you're on wait wait hold on hold on a second wait wait 404 I'm, I'm here something with that thought and I try to I know that was kind of offensive to a, a lot of people but yeah sometimes guys we, I mean we want to I, I don't listen one of my friends asked me and listen I'm telling you this is one of my friends <laughs> he said man Tony you don't listen to Rush Limbaugh I'm like what <laughs> Why in the hell would I listen to Rush Limbaugh? He said, well, because uh, he has a different perspective. <laughs> I, was, I, said, I listen to a different perspective all the time. Doesn't mean I listen to Rush Limbaugh, but he does. And that's where he gets his makeup from. It's important for us guys, what we know, because we don't get this opportunity a lot, or the majority of people. To hear what other people think about our country, about us. I know he was getting personal with, with, with Trump. That's why I said he was getting offensive uh, as, as far as that goes. But we should have our eyes wide open like we have our ears wide open and be at least acceptable to hearing critique, criticism, and different ideas. That doesn't mean anybody has to be offensive. I agree, but um, try not to be mad about it. Just be smarter about it and just say, well, 
that's their opinion. Okay, but I need to know their opinion so I know what I need to do to make it better, right? So just try and look at it that way. And everybody's not going to agree on everything. All right, Ray, go ahead. Uh-oh. I'm going to see four. You're on. I'm getting some text. Mm. No. Well, not to me. Hello. 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 Yeah. Uh, I did not hear the unmute on this one, so it's like, there might be some other 404 out there. So I'd like to okay. get back to some questions uh, with respect to what's going on with the bank, uh, please. Um, okay. Because in your opening commentary, you made the comment that the bank people had been called in to work on Sunday, which would be implying that they had been uh, told not to come in. And I'm wondering if I had made a proper assessment on, on that. And kind of following up also on, on 281's inquiry with respect to Texas, whether or not the people were being called in, whether or not that did include Texas. Okay, did not include Texas. Period. Well, it did include others. did not include Texas. They still didn't go in. So, again, obviously, they know something everybody else doesn't know. And... To tell you the truth, even though I heard um, things were going to be said on Saturday and Sunday were saved word, just not what I wanted, I'm still not overly excited about it till I hear something from Texas tell me they're on standby alert going in or they feel like something's going to happen. Okay? Because I tell you guys, I really didn't think anything would happen until the end of the month which they're gearing up for right now. I mean, they are. And it could go all the way to the middle of the month because Parliament's not scheduled to come back to the 10th. Doesn't mean a whole lot stuff on paper. That's when they're scheduled. So I'm yeah. looking at the end of the month and the middle of the month. Go ahead. Yeah. And, and when you were saying that they had been called uh, to come back in to, to, uh, on, on Sunday, did they actually get a directive not to be coming in at any point over the weekend, like Saturday or Friday afternoon or whatever? They did, they, what happened was they had uh, put them on um, split shifts, let's say that, okay. and then some people more in the evening that. But on Sunday, they told everybody to come in now. They were called at home, come in now, because they thought yeah. something could possibly be happening. And at this particular point, we know that they were on the 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. schedule through the end of the month, which would take us through through Wednesday. Are they back on that schedule at this point, or are they now they, kind of back on a skeleton crew? Nope, they're on that schedule. That's the schedule they're on. They're okay. there right now. Okay. Um, Okay, uh, another question. Uh, with uh, re respect to kind of getting geared up for demonstrations and the like over in Iraq, um, are they saying it's more uh, along the side of the dissatisfaction with let's get things going, or is it getting in a more popular kind of standpoint that they're getting geared for October 2nd being National Day and kind of celebrating on, on that, or is it a little bit a combination of both? No, the articles are just about demonstrating because the reforms aren't done. There's okay. nothing about the celebration, National Day, doing that. It's strictly about demonstrators in the square, and they're talking about how they're going to block off businesses, cut off streets, and, and, and those things like they did yeah. last year, and saying they're not going to stop until they get their reforms. Okay, okay. And lastly, you, you made the, the reference that, that there are the articles uh, starting to surface uh, about uh, focusing in on, on corruption, the arrest of prominent people. Um, your sources over there, are they kind of adding names to, to that, such as we might be saying that suddenly the prominent people might be including the likes of Malachi, Alak, so on? Or is it just no. being still? And they're not, trust me, guys, they are going to be the last ones on the list. Okay, Doc. Well, they're just taking a long time, too long. So, but whatever. <laughs> and we know, whenever, 
all of this does transpire. Ten days from that will be the TNT super fantastic er to the nth degree or whatever. And Ray, you're not saying to the nth the other one because to the nth degree is much easier to say. So I'll stick with that one too. TNT super fantastic <laughs> er pay it forward project. And with that, we know that it's going into October. So we appreciate your help and thanks for connecting the dots for us. Okay. Money coming to us. All right, thank you. Thanks again. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. 972. You're on. Hello, fellas. Danny and Dallas. Hey, Danny. Danny, how you doing, man? Woo! My goodness. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. You're very welcome. Hope you feel better, Tony. All right. Thank you, sir. Great. We went over a little. That's the bottom half of the hour. Let's wrap oh. this one up. Right. Okay, wait. Turn the music off. Hold on a second. Okay, guys, I'm going to try and do this. Short voice and all. So everybody understands something. Um, this is about, and what we've been about, is the dinar revaluing. Been about the GCR getting done. Uh, we've been about how it's going to change and affect our lives, what our futures would, would be, and more important than that, how we could help each other get through this and make the best plan for the future that we could have. As we go along, and we've been going through this for years, you know, Bush did it. He did us the greatest favor he could. For years, eight years, Obama's their fault. Obama did this. Obama did that. Obama's the reason that we don't have it. He stopped the GCR 100 million times already. It was all Obama's fault. Even though, and I can say that, he was building a foundation for a long-term relationship with Iraq and to change their laws, their mentality, and the fact that this will be a good opportunity for the globe, or for, and global, or global, and not just a one-time thing where it was worthless. I didn't like it any more than you like it. I want to just get my money just like everybody else. Man, why do you have to be so conscientious for the world or conscientious for the future to do something like that? We can just get our money now and let everybody else worry about it. And I got to realize he was doing it. Didn't like it any better than anybody else. But now, the thing that there are a lot of people, gurus, that are trying to absolutely give Trump credit for this entire thing, which he did not do, didn't plan, didn't put together. Is he making part of it happen? Absolutely. And that's what I said. It's the last three administrations. Everybody's doing their part. I am saying he selected the right person to be prime minister this time. They negotiated that deal, and it looks like they're getting it done. I can say maybe if this is the guy that Obama selected the first time or the third time, this would already be done if he would be as forceful as he was today. But I don't know that. So everybody gets to have part of that done, okay? Not one person who has done this for us, made it happen great or anything else. It will, in fact, happen during his watch. That doesn't mean just because you go and close on a piece of property or a house that he built the whole house. So he did. It was a collaboration of three administrations that put us in this position that we're in. I told you guys, I absolutely love Donald Trump. When he put out The Art of the Deal, The Art of the Deal was the greatest book to me. It was motivation to everything because I started in real estate. And I was like, man, I bought my first seven houses, no money down, after I read The Art of the Deal. Because then I knew the deal. And everything else from that part, which I thought was absolutely great. But I also know this. This country has never, ever, well, I'm not, I already said 50s and 60s, been put in the position that it's in today. 
the way people feel, see, react to each other, the way the rest of the world looks at our country. I've always been the proudest of this country. And so have so many others who can't truly say they are that today. Every other country has always given us the utmost respect. And I can't say they're doing the same thing today. I just can't. In all honesty, we either like it, don't like it, or we agree with the way it's going. We do not have the same level of respect we had four years ago, eight years ago, or 20 years ago. We, we just don't. And you'll know that if you speak to people from other countries, if you watch, <clears throat> like I've been telling you guys for years, watch other news stations besides CNN and Fox. But other news stations, other countries' news, because that's what I do, and you'll see they just don't feel the same way about us as they used to. And and that's a bad feeling when you want to be a leader, but where you losing some of that leadership capability. So, yes, they're questioning it. And we can get mad about it, just about it. Why are you questioning my leadership? Because it's not the same. And that's just being honest about it. But we'll change that. That doesn't mean we're not loyal to our country, to our followers and everything. Us up here, years ago we said we weren't going to do politics. Everybody on this call is not Republican. Everybody on this call is not Democrat. Everybody doesn't like Biden. Everybody doesn't like Trump. What we are and what we like is the dinar. The currency and what's happening with it and what we can do with it along the way. Things go, we'll get calls like, like we did today where everybody just does it. I, I don't ever take it personal. I try not to ever take it personal when, I mean, I didn't like George Bush. I mean, I really didn't. I read his book. I watched his uh, interview with Oprah. I read his book again, and I changed my whole mindset. I said, man, that guy's not who I thought he was, but now I know who he is, which was good. I like Obama. I didn't like everything Obama did, and there's a lot of things I think he should have done that he didn't do, but I like him, okay? I like Trump for his business things, except we're hearing some things today that may change that. But, but I did, but it doesn't mean I like everything that he does as a president. I mean, I just don't, and nobody likes everything anybody does. I would hope not anyway, in that respect, and, and what it goes to us. So the thing is to look at things, be open-minded, make your, your decisions based on how it's going to affect you. And I'll tell you this, I get in arguments with my friends, all the time about voting, not voting, electoral laws, state laws, state councilmen. I mean, we have all kinds of discussions. But in the end, we always decide, well, shoot. I mean, it doesn't matter who becomes president to me personally, because nothing they do is going to change my life. Not personally, but what does it do for my country? is what I have to look at. And some people refuse to look at that. I don't care. It's not going to affect my bank account. It's not going to affect where I live or, or anything else. And in four more years, we'll be doing it all over again. But people don't realize it does affect your life, your future. And you guys know I'm all about legacies. And it does affect affect that and that's the things you do need to look at what we can invest in can invest in and those certain things just something i'm just saying be open-minded don't be offensive but also be true to yourself i, I, I want to say say that and i don't care just because you didn't like something obama did or that bush did or even that Trump did. It's your opinion. We can talk about it without it being offensive to me because it's your opinion. 
And when we start quoting facts and this and that, and it, it, it's different. But long as how you feel, and I can say how I feel, and we can discuss it, why we feel that way, that's what we're supposed to do as, as adults, as citizens, and as a democracy. That's what we're supposed to do. You guys are going to be so much more a part of that in the future when you're millionaires, multi-millionaires, billionaires. You're going to have influence, like I've been telling you for 10 years, in your cities, your counties, your states, even your governments at that point. You're going to have influence. You're going to be part of this system. I'm going to say, so you need to start thinking about what system you want to be part of and then how you're going to influence that and what direction you're going to help go. So bottom line, this is about the dinar, the dong, the him. It's about the GCR. It's about what's holding it up. And, and I hate that politics has even come to the end of it now, and it seems like it keeps trying to creep in, creep in, instead of us just watching what Iraq doing. But guess what? In Iraq, it's politics. That's what it always has been, and that's what it's going to be until it happens. And we just have to deal with it. That's all. Right now, we're in a super fantastic position. They thought it was going this weekend. They were actually trying to prepare for it. Now we're going towards the end of the month. Or well, could be the 15th. I don't know what's going to happen. I know they were really excited last Monday when I wasn't supposed to be saying anything. And I will guess later this evening I'll find out where they're at today. But I know we're so much closer to it than we've ever been. And we're about to get through it. And let's do it together. Okay? Teamwork makes the dream work. So, what I want you guys to do is do what I'm going to do. Seems like my voice is getting better, doesn't it? And that is enjoy <laughs> the rest of your day. <laughs> All right? Because I'm enjoying the rest of my day. And hopefully if we get anything, we'll tweet it out. Ray will put it in the form. Or we'll do another call. That's what it takes. But enjoy your day. If not, I'll talk to you on Wednesday. Right? All right. Keep believing, folks. We sure this. This keeps me going.